Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a video for you on how you can use the new Airflow 2.7 setup teardown tasks to perform more efficient data quality checks and really just more efficient process data processing in general. Um, so here, I just kind of have a Figma up of a general data quality workflow where you have data ingested into a temp table um, and then that data is clean to prep for any data quality checks. Some data quality checks are applied while the data lives in that temp table. Um, and then that data is either if it passes those checks, it gets copied into production and the temp table is deleted. But if it fails those checks, then the data team is alerted with the details of that failure. However, you'll notice that in this case, the temp table won't actually be deleted. Um, and the reason why that's a problem is when you're dealing with larger data sets, if that temporary data staging table isn't cleaned, then number one, you could, you know, next time you import data into it, it still has that bad data there. So it's just going to keep failing. But two, uh, it costs money. Um, you know, if you're just storing data in a temp table in an S3 bucket, that's going to cost you. Um, and the reason why, you know, typically that temp table won't be deleted if it fails is because the data quality check failure will just stop that pipeline and send that alert. Um, and typically the process to delete the table is, you know, hey, after these data quality checks have run, then delete the table. Um, and so there's some kind of hacky ways you could like, you know, delete the table using a bunch of trigger rules before. But now a setup teardown task, what you can do is use a teardown task, which will always run no matter if any tasks in before it failed. Um, and so what I'll do now is show you what that looks like in practice. So what we'll do is build a standard data quality checking pipeline and then set a setup task to create that table at the beginning of it and a teardown task to delete that table at the end of it so that that temp table only lives while it's being used for those data quality checks. Um, and you can extrapolate and use a similar workflow for if you know, you're doing model training, anything where you're dealing with a lot uh, a lot of resources that are only being used for a specific DAG run. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the code and I'll show you how to do this. So the first thing we're going to do here, as always, is set some uh, import our libraries and packages. So here, the important ones you're going to want note of are from the Airflow decorators, import, setup, and teardown. Um, and these are what we're going to use to denote our tasks as a setup or teardown task. Um, the rest of these are pretty standard. Chain linear is just an upgraded version of the chain function. Um, and you see also the SQL column check operators and the SQL table check operators, as well as a Snowflake operator. So we'll be using a Snowflake database to run our data quality checks today. Um, so after we're done with that, what we'll do is just set some uh, environment first, just set some global variables here. Um, so just defining our forest fire table. So we're ingesting forest fire data, running some data quality checks on it, uh, and then deleting that table, whether or not those data quality checks failed. Uh, but if they succeed, then we'll load that data into production. Um, so we've defined our Snowflake connection, our Snowflake forest fire table. Now we can define our DAG. Um, so here, we're just going to call it simple Snowflake DAG. Um, it's going to have a template search path to search for the SQL uh, statements I'm going to run in here. So I have all the SQL commands just in Python files instead of needing to kind of just write out the SQL commands directly in the DAG code, which is just very inefficient. Um, and also costs more on parsing, um, which is a fun fact. So the first thing we'll do is create what will become our setup task. So you actually won't, unless you're declaring it just as a setup task, which is a Python function, you actually won't add anything to this operator to declare it as a setup task in the actual operator declaration part. Um, so you just declare it like normal. We're just uh, executing a create force file, a table statement in Snowflake. Um, then we're going to have a load data function, which is going to load some forest fire data um, into that uh, table we just created. Uh, if you've already seen my Snowflake data quality checks, this is going to look familiar. Uh, but it's a little bit upgraded, don't worry. And then finally, and next you have our actual data quality checks. So a task group um, using a SQL column check and a table check uh, just to make sure our data is actually passing these data quality checks. Um, and then I'll actually add a parentheses down here as well. Um, and so these are where, hey, if these pass or if they fail, that's what's going to decide whether or not our DAG lives or dies. Um, and no matter what, again, those data quality tables, temp tables will still be deleted. Um, so after we're done with that, we then will load our data into production. Um, so you can see the Snowflake operator there, load in production. There's another SQL statement um, to just load our forest fire data. Um, and then what we'll do is create our teardown task, which is going to be delete table. So you see here we have my delete table task, um, which is just 
going to be deleting that table. And again, you'll notice here, we're not declaring it as a teardown task explicitly when we create the operator. We're just creating a normal Snowflake operator, and we'll add the teardown decorator later. Um, and then we'll just create a begin and end uh, operator. So we just have the beginning and the ending of the task. And then we will use the new chain linear function to actually chain all of our tasks together. And this is where you'll actually declare your setup teardown task. Um, so here we have loaded in production. So that's uh, where it's going to load in production. So I'll show you what this looks like in the view. We have a branching logic here. Um, but then you have your delete table. So this task we just created here using the Snowflake operator dot as teardown method. So similar to like the dot expand method. Here we have a dot as teardown to create it as a teardown task, which then mean and then also assign it a either one or many set of tasks. Um, so essentially the relationship this create this is creating, and I'll again show this in the UI, is that any tasks that run in between the create table and the delete table task have no bearing on whether or not this delete table will be run. So even if just the setup task runs and creates that table, and then every other task after it before the teardown task fails, that teardown task will still run. So your resources, in this case, you know, so when you're setting up, that's going to be a resource creation. Teardown, you're going to want to be do re your resource kill um, task. And so then any task in between them doesn't affect the state of teardown. It will always run no matter what. Um, and that is very different from any other type of task. Um, it is a new, unique task type. Um, and this is actually uh, using the trigger and some of the functionality there to kind of monitor, hey, even if none of these tasks run, then still trigger this teardown task to run in and you know delete that table. Um, so now that we've gotten our DAG code written out, that's honestly not the most interesting part of this, let's go back to uh, the web page and just look at an Airflow UI and see what this looks like in practice, because I think that part's pretty interesting. So here we are in the Airflow UI, and let's go take a look at our task, or our DAG. So here, if we open up the Airflow UI, see I've definitely done some playing around with it, but I want to open up the, uh, one of these successful runs to quick show you what this looks like in practice. Um, so you can see here, I have a DAG run where I have my create table and my delete temp table. And so here, what I want you to focus on is the dotted line here that's connecting the create table and the delete temp table. Um, so this is saying that, hey, anything that happens in between these two um, tasks, doesn't matter, teardown task is always deleted. And so you just see that linkage is represented within this dotted line. Um, if I wanted to actually have nested set of teardown tasks, whereas, hey, uh, you know, I want to create another table for another part of this and then also tear it down, you can do that. So you can have set of teardown tasks instead of set up instead in, sorry, in, inside of set of teardown tasks um, if you want to create that kind of nested function. Uh, but what the important thing here is that let's say I have a data quality check that fails. So in this case, you know, my table check has failed. The SQL table check uh, is not run successfully. And you'll notice here, this load into production won't run, and the end won't run, but my delete table function will run. Um, so even though this upstream task has failed, this teardown task, no matter what, will still uh, run. And I'm actually sorry, I didn't realize my face was blocking it. Um, but you can see here we have this trigger rule, all done set of success. Um, and you can see that's different from the all success uh, trigger rule. So this is a separate all done set of success trigger rule um, that is saying, hey, only care about the setup success, not the actual success of any task before it. Um, so that's what's that saying there, because and the reason it's all done setup success is because you can expand this out to have um, multiple setup tasks feed into one trigger task. So if you want to create multiple tables in parallel and then just have one uh, teardown task to kill them all, um, then you can do that. Or if you have different resources, um, just a lot of flexibility there. You're really not locked in just that one-to-one -one relationship. Um, and just to kind of show you what a nested one looks like, um, if we go into this next task, you'll see I actually have a nested, so you see I have this outer set of teardown task, and then I also have an inner set of teardown task. And you can see this one is actually dependent on both of these two set of tasks to run. So this is where an example of where, hey, you can have multiple teardown or set of tasks feed into one teardown task that kills all those resources. Um, and that is really all I wanted to show you today. Um, it is a really cool function. I'm really excited to see what people do with it. This is new Airflow 2.7 stuff. Um, so it is just coming out this week, I believe. Um, so 
really highly recommend making use of this in your data pipelines if you can, just to save some money on that cloud resource spend, which is always good for the bottom line. Um, and so anyways, that's all I have for you all today. Data guy out, like subscribe if you like this and drop a question in the comments if you have any. Peace.